Hey guys, uh, let's just get into it. Um, so last time, okay, not quite just into it. Uh, last time I uh, said that I believed that you could not attach to a pseudo device, by which I, sh you know, hopefully I've clarified that you don't actually attach to devices, you attach to attribute or attachment uh, attributes uh, of a device. Um, and I said that because, like, this get devi function, um, when we are at some, you know, non-root attribute, or whenever, checks that this name that we're passed to this add dev function, um, is not a pseudo device, that means that you can't add something to a pseudo device's attachment attribute. That doesn't make any sense because this is the device that you're attaching. You can't attach. We already know that you can't attach a uh, pseudo device because, uh, like, you know. Well, so f for one thing, this won't let you. Um, for another thing, uh, def dev attach. So when you define a device's allowable attachment attributes, um, it won't let you do that for a pseudo device. Pseudo devices cannot attach. However, they can have attachment attributes, um, at least syntactically. Um, it seems like uh, it seems like you could theoretically, and I've you know looked at the code as much as I can. Right, there doesn't seem to be anything preventing it from happening here. Um, you know. Um, right, so I guess we're going to look up in the dev base tab, the at base, um, which, you know, probably won't be anything. Well, I guess, you know, we'll look up if there's a pseudo device with the same attribute name. Um, but it does not seem like there's anything, um, checking that, like, this is a uh, doesn't seem like there's anything preventing you from attaching to an attachment attribute of a pseudo device. The issue is that in practice, I searched the in, like you know throughout the entire OpenBSD you know configuration files tree or whatever, and it seems that all of the attributes that all pseudo devices have are all plain attributes. So in practice, I don't think any of this matters. Um, but, you know, I've searched for some way, something that might say that there's no way that you can attach to a pseudo device. Um, however, but I just, like, I can't seem to find anything that would prevent it from happening. Um, I suppose I could, like, just make up an attachment attribute uh, <laughs> and like, you know, uh, attach it to some made up pseudo device um, and then try to attach some other device to it. But I don't really want to do that. Um, it seems pretty obvious that you're not supposed to attach them to uh, attach anything to uh, an attribute of a pseudo device. Um, so um yeah anyway um the yeah um because this is just gonna look for the device that you're attaching it's just gonna look at the device you're attaching and its attachment attributes um so like yeah it doesn't seem like there'd be anything wrong um with that so and then add sudo doesn't check if like any of the um i mean like it doesn't check for it just checks to make sure that you're actually adding a sudo device um yeah and then 
enable dev. Um, and we're not going to look at that one. New Devi, don't need to look at. Um, not add conf. Don't need resolve, exclude, set manager. That's all for stuff that we don't need to worry about. Yeah, get a device attachment. It's not going to matter. Um, when we're um, yeah, so when we're defining a device attachment, like you can't define one for a pseudo device, so pseudo devices can't attach. But I still don't see any any reason why you couldn't attach to a pseudo device. Um, when we do uh, like you know define a device. Um, We don't check um, that the attribute list. Um, we don't, you know, check for the attribute list that like any of its um, attributes are like pseudo devices. Um, we just add this device to any attachment attributes. Um, so. I really don't see why it couldn't happen. Um, maybe there's some code somewhere else that checks for it uh, that I haven't, you know, I'm not remembering or haven't found yet. But it seems like that can happen. Um, but in any in any case, um, I wanted to move on to um, what we do with all of the stuff that we just did. So if we're back, like you know, all the way in main, we went through YY parse, and it took a long time. But then we get into fixed files. Um, you know, now we're done parsing the configuration file, including machine definitions, and now we're going to, you know, pick out which files we're actually going to use. So if we go to files.c, um, We can look at this. Basically, we loop through all files, and uh, um, the only way that this hidden flag has, can get set so far is if we uh, had a needs count file line that had something that wasn't a uh, dev base as one of the atoms. Um, and so, if that happened, we'll skip it. Um, and then, if we have options, depending on whether or not it's going to be enabled. Um, we will evaluate that option expression um, based on whether or not the um, file flags have needs count, uh, needs flag, or neither. Um, so if you have needs count, then you use the fixed count. Otherwise, you use the fixed F cell. And if you have needs flag, and otherwise, you just fix cell. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the flattened list of this option expression. So this is the tree-like version. And this is the flattened version that just says like, for counted devices, it says how many of them there are in each node. And it's just an NV list um, that has the name of the option and for needs count, how many of them are, how many of them there are, and for needs flag, whether or not it was in the select tab. Um, so we evaluate that little expression, um, you know, based on whether or not um, you're in the select tab and, or like, you know, in the uh, dev base tab uh, and what your du max is. Um, and notice that, like, you know, if there is no like option flag, then we just skip all that and we automatically include the file. And then we check to make sure that like nothing has the same base name, right? So if it has, if something has the ba same base name as this, then it's going to generate the same like object file, and that's not good. So if something does, then what we will do is just take our source 
take the source file from the newer one and override the old one, and we'll set uh, the hidden uh, hidden flag on the um, old file, um, and the new file um, we will set the select flag on. So the select flag means like we're compiling this file into the kernel. And after this part of this loop, um, we don't touch hidden anymore. So, or fi cell, I'm pretty sure, but definitely not fi hidden. Um, so like after this, the files that we're compiling into the kernel are set. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. You can get into more, you can check the, there's some, you know, if you want to see an example of some like recursion, you can look at this expression eval function, which takes a function pointer, which is one of these either fix cell or fix F cell or fix count functions, you know, and, you know, calls itself recursively with this function pointer and context and like all that fun stuff, um, you know. So anyway, um, that's, you know, kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's go back to main because that's it for fixed files. Fixed objects, not used because OpenBSD always has the source code for something that it's compiling into its kernel. Um, this max users checking, you know, if max users was never set, then we set max users to def max users, um, assuming this has been set. Otherwise, something went wrong. Uh, cross check just uh, makes sure that every device instance has a parent or is at root, um, and then does some stuff with the configurations. Um, but that's only if we're not at swap generic, which the default configuration uh, just has the one config, uh, one kernel configuration, sub configuration. I don't know exactly how to phrase that, but within a configuration file, you can specify different sort of sub kernels that will, you know, have their root um, file system, you know, be on a certain device or other. Um, but yeah, basically we're checking to make sure that every device instance actually has a parent device. Um, and then let's you know get into pack. This is, okay, so pack and make ioconf are probably the most difficult parts of all of this. You can see we're almost done, right? Like uh, this is super short, this is a little longer. This is pretty short. This actually doesn't do anything unless you have some special swap set up, uh, which we don't. So we don't even do anything there. Um, so it's basically just this, this, and pack. And bad star, I guess, but bad star is also pretty easy. So once we get through all of that, we'll be done. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's go to pack. So the... Um, main point of pack is to um, filter out or pack down into a small array only the device instances that you really want um, with no duplicates essentially so you could have like multiple uh, USB star device instances um and uh, like some of them might attach to different attributes you know like one might be attaching to like you can have a usb bus at like you know a second generation uh controller or you could have it at like a you know us maybe they only attach to usb hubs i can't remember exactly how the code is factorized but like you get the idea like the USB star could be at different you know lines um, or could be at different attributes um, but you might have it listed twice in the configuration file just because of something you included and you didn't know you included 
Um, and you just want to sort of pack all that down because every time you create a new device instance, it gets added to like this all devies list. Um, so we just sort of want to pack everything down. And that's the first thing that we're going to do. Um, and that gets used just to give you a little context because why not? Um, that gets used right here. So in this ioconf.c file, um, which we'll get into when we look at make ioconf, um, this CF data is all of the device instances that there are, right? I mean, <laughs> um, all of the like non-pseudo device instances that there are. Uh, in the OpenBSD tree, um, like so, and there's not like too too many. I mean, there's like 450, I think, um, and you can see like a lot of them are starred. So like you don't. Some of them are duplicated. Maybe we can find one that's duplicated because it's at like you know different. It can be at different things. But usually the only reason why, so there's three ways that a device instance can be different. It can be at a different attrib at attribute. It could have different, it could be at the same at attribute but have different locators, right? So these um, locators, like address negative one, size negative one, those could be set to some other val value other than negative one. That would get a new device instance in this tree or in this array. Um, and then the last thing is that it could have same at attribute, um, same locator values for that at attribute, but have different CF flags, which I believe is this entry right here. Um, it, actually, I think it's this one, maybe. No, that's name. That's the name. I don't know. Um, it's at the very top, so. Yeah, it's flags. Yeah, so it is this one, which is almost always zero. But those are the three ways that like two device instances with the same name, like audio star, could be different. Um, and there are instances. I'm just you know they're kind of kind of rare, so you're not gonna see them. And they give you a little comment before each line that says sort of like what's going on, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, like, you know, this is just a comment um, about, like, the defining line, I guess, from where this came. So, yeah, you might... Um, well, yeah, so you can see your CPU zero and CPU star. But anyway, um, we'll get into that more later. That's sort of where that's going. And then the... Um, we're also going to pack down locators, right? So these uh, locator values, a lot of them are the same. Um, and so basically what we're going to do is put the list of all uh, locators into one list, right? And uh, yeah, we base what we want to do really is just find a like... Um, you can see that there's some repeats, but like if we included all of the locators of all like 450, it's basically just to pack things down. Um, if we included all like 450 devices, all their locators, and just put them one right after another, um, this would be a lot bigger. It's probably not strictly necessary, but that's the way that it's done. Um, like, I don't think it would be so big that it would be unmanageable, but like, you know, it's worth it, I, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, like, um, yeah, so instead of like storing the actual locator values, you just store like a pointer to some index in this array that says like, hey, uh, <laughs> use the locators starting at like, you know, this point and use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them 
which is true. Like most of these ones that have these hex digits, they're seven long. Um, so like that's why you see a lot of them. Um, but yeah, that's what the where the locators. That's what we're trying to build with this locators list. And then the there's also like a parent vectors uh, list, which is this one which is a list of like all of the parents, like all of the device instances that are parents for your particular device or that could be a parent device for your particular device. And they start with the longest one first. So you can see the longest one uh, and they end with negative one ends right here. And then they get a little bit shorter. The next one's right here. And then down here you can see there's a bunch of just single length ones things that can only have one, you know, parent. Um, and some devices, like, so if you have the parents uh, 107 and 108, right, you don't have to create a whole new entry. You can just point to this one because you'll have parent 107, 108, and then end. So that's what we're trying to create um, with pack PVEC. Pack locs we already went over. And this, we just get, like, a bound for how big this locators.vec array can be. And this we will, locators.used, we will count as we go through each packed devices uh, thing. Uh, each packed devices parent list. That's the word. Um, so, yeah, let's look at pack devi um, because, okay, so, the first, so okay, basic scenario is we loop through all device attachments and we loop through all the instances on those attachments. So remember that all uh, device attachments, um, so every instance on a device attachment is going to be the same dev base, right? The only issue is whether or not it's unit, the unit numbers of all of the devices that are attaching are the same. And this also includes all the aliases in its device instance list. Um, you know, if you loop through all devs or all dev bases, um, then uh, like each dev base only holds one of each alias. But this could have like five USB stars on it um, in this list. And then each USB star would be like some entry in this linked list um, of all the USB star aliases. Um, so what you have to do essentially is, and so like you could start with the longest, you could start at the very front of that alias list, right? The first instance on this, the first USB star that you get through right here uh, could be at the very front of the alias list, in which case you will loop through all of them. And so right here, um, we skip um, over, so we set CF index on any device, we set it equal to negative one like every time, like before we enter any of this, it's done at a certain point in like new Devi or like get Devi somewhere in there. Um, but if it's greater than or equal to zero, then that means it's already been set. So we don't want to go through this whole thing again because of this line. So this line, this N is like our current, like the next available entry in packed, right? So you can see it gets updated after you enter something in this entry. You know, it starts off at zero. Um, that's just like the next location in this already allocated packed array that's empty and ready for a new device instance. Um, this says that like, okay, um, before we enter this list of aliases, we're only going, okay, so when we try to find an equivalent alias, we're only going to look through the packed array um, at 
like starting at like where we are when we enter this loop, right? So the first alias in here that doesn't have its CF index, you know, already set is going to get a new entry in packed. So if we don't skip these right here and we do the longest one first, we're gonna get duplicates basically. Um, yeah, this is kind of like, this is some of the, this whole thing right here is probably some of the most complicated code um, that there is in this program. I mean, like this loop is kind of ridiculous. I mean, not ridiculous, but it's something. I mean, there's four levels of four loops, you know, so. Um, but anyway, basically what this is doing is it's looking at all of the device instances and any of them, it's going to pick just one of each device instance that is the same, that, that, you know, of all the ones that are the same. And what the same means is it attaches to the same attribute, it has the same locators, and it has the same flags. That's it. Um, you know, long story short, that's it. How they do it, kind of complicated, but that's how they do it. And then the last thing that we do is we loop through them again and we add parents. Um, so each device instance has like a parents array. Um, <clears throat> that um, just enables, well, so um, what you do with add parents is you loop through all of the devices and you add the parents of that device instance to the um, parents of a of the one that like was chosen out of all of the aliases. So yeah, we check to make sure that the one that we're actually adding the parents list to isn't collapsed because that would be bad. And if we're at root, then we don't have any parents to add, so we don't do anything there. Um, and then, so we check, like, if we're at a device, then we just look at um, all of the, so in parents, I'll show you down here. Um, you give it a, like, device, basically, and that device loops through all of its instances, and remember for like devices, this instance list does not include aliases. So we loop through alias all the instances of the device and then we loop through all of the aliases of each instance and take the ones that aren't collapsed and have the same unit number as the one that was passed or all of them if the unit that was passed is wild. Which <clears throat> for this at dev, right? Because we have to pick the ones, the parents that we can actually be at um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of rushing this a little bit, but it's also, uh, I, maybe it's just too, uh, too complex to really explain. I mean, nothing's too complex to really explain, but maybe I don't want to. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, we're going, the first thing that we do is we count all of the possible parents. So like, um, yeah, we have an at device. So if we're at a device, then we have a like a device and a unit number that we can be at. Um, and so if this unit is wild, then we're just gonna pick all of the devices that, you know, if this unit is a question mark, then we're just gonna pick all of those dev bases that we can find that aren't collapsed, all instances of this dev base that aren't collapsed. Um, otherwise, we're going to take just the ones that have this same number. Um, so, for example, down here, right, we're going to loop through all of the instances of the device and then all of its aliases and take the ones that aren't collapsed with the same number if you know, we're at a particular device number, otherwise wild. Um, and we're gonna increase the count. We will also create a list of them the second time through once we know how many there are. That is what happens right here and then here. You can notice the only difference between this and this call is that this 
as a an array right here. Um, so then that's if we're at a device. If we're at an attribute, then we just do this process for all of the possible parent devices of this attribute. And this source at unit is just going to be question mark. So this is going to be wild. Um, and yeah, like that's it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then we, you know, we have to rerun it again to set P correctly. Um, and all of this, this is done, like, so this is done for each device instance. So then we check and make sure that, like, okay, are we going to be adding the same device instances to the, like, destinations parents array twice? If so, then mark the ones that are duplicates so that we don't add them twice. You can still technically d get duplicates because if you list an attribute more than one time uh, in a device's defining line, it will be in um, the attributes refs more than one time. So this will get called more than one time with the same arguments and you'll get things added more than one time um, in this loop and you don't check your own like recently allocated loop for stuff. You just check the ones that you're going to add with the ones that have already been added. You don't check this loop against itself for duplicates. So you could still get duplicates, but like it would be kind of difficult. I mean, I guess it could happen if you had a really long, uh, if you had a really long device line, it could happen, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, and that's add parents, right? So um, that is all of pack Devi. So then let's go back up here to pack, right? We're done with pack Devi. The rest of this is a lot easier. Um, <laughs> then we count up how much space we're going to need to allocate for the locators.vec. Um, and then we pack locs. So what we do with locators to pack locs is, um, I mean, conceptually it's fairly straightforward, so I'm not gonna get into the details because um, the details are a little bit more complicated. Um, but we loop through our newly created packed array sorted by location, locator length. Um, so the like devices, instances with the most locators get sorted first. Um, and um, if, you know, the, you know, locator length of the device we're looking at is greater than zero, which it will be for the first one anyway, um, we attempt to find a vector, right? So we attempt to find a, like, sequence of locator strings that are the same as the ones of this device's at attribute. Um, and if we do, we like essentially set the locator offset, right? That's the index into this locator's array to be the index that we found. Otherwise, we tack it on to the end. Um, and if there is no locator list, then we set loc off to negative one. So, right, an invalid offset. So this loc off, right, is the index into, um, actually I don't have it right here, that's for something else, um, is the index into this array, right? So um, actually what I can do here is, okay, we've got a dev negative one, function negative one, um, and it's saying the locators are at like location locator plus 130 so um i don't have these marked off and numbered like i do over here which makes life a little easier um i copied and pasted this but this is for a separate set of things um so but these are have there's eight of these each per line so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, that's 80. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
that is um, actually right here technically because they start at zero is going to be 120. Uh, this is going to be 128, 129, 130, 131. And what did we say it was? Yeah, location 130. Notice that this one just has like one of them and it starts at 131, but still there's two negative ones. So you start at like this spot and you get two negative ones. Um, obviously there's a lot of different places where there's two negative ones. The packing isn't perfect. Um, you know, generally when you're trying to compress something, there's a trade-off between how well you compress it and how long it takes to compress it. So, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> that's what that's doing. And then pack PVAC is doing a similar thing, right? We have all of the parents of each, um, a, like, device instance in packed, and we are uh, going to essentially, um, right, we start creating this array. If we can find a sequence of like, you know, parent, and this is the CF index, right? So that's what we, uh, that's its index in packed when we first create it, basically, that in, um, Where are you? Yeah, this in, right? Um, CF index gets set to in, right? This in, this index into pack when we first sort it. We can rearrange pack later, but um, yeah. Um, that is, um, so these are the index, those CF indexes of the parents of a device. And so like, you know, we look for, you know, a string ending in negative one of all of the parents of the device. And if we find it, we put its index as PV plus whatever right here. So, right, uh, I'm not gonna go through and prove it to you or like show you an example, but if you look up uh, PV plus 184, you would get all the parents of U video, which or video star, which would be U video star or UTVFU star um, in a sequence ended with negative one, right? So whatever the U video uh, CF index followed by the UTVFU CF index is would be one right after another followed by a negative one. Um, it works. Um, it makes sense if you really look at it. There's some other stuff that I'm gonna show you that doesn't really make sense if you really look at it, but once we've done that, we're through with pack. So, um, yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna finish up by talking a little bit about uh, bad star. Um, because, okay, it's maybe a little confusing, but basically all we do is we are checking to see if we have any like star units um, that have to be, uh, that are any device bases with uh, instances with a unit like number of star um, where the dev base is used in a needs count file line. So you can't have a count of how many types of a dev base there are if one of them has like an unlimited, if there's an instance that can allow an unlimited number of them. Um, so they're checking to make sure that that's true. Um, and they're also making sure that if you do have anything in here that you like actually have an uncollapsed alias. Um, yeah. So um, if we actually enter this found star thing, that means that we had an alias with a star unit um, and we look at its entire alias list and check to make sure that at least one of them is not collapsed. 
Um, so, yeah. Um, because if you, I guess, uh, have a, like, you know, you just want to make sure that you didn't collapse all of your star aliases, I guess. Um, because that would be, that would be bad. And it actually panics if that happens. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, next time we will get into the last couple of main functions um, before, hopefully the next video is the last because we'll just go through this little bit. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hope that uh, that was informative at least a little bit. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks for just, you know, just being you. Just, uh, life's good, and, uh, yeah. Have a good one. Peace.